Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the September 2022 sheet load. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the newest sheet load of cards, September, 2022. There are a few special things about this month's printable. Not only are we using six by six paper, and not only is it a mini slimline size, but it is also a tent topper card. So I thought this would be fun to give a try just for something unique and different. In yesterday's video, I shared a look at the first set and today we are going to make that. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the printable, you will want to check out yesterday's video, which is the debut, and I do have it linked in that description box below. Also today, my team of collaborators will be joining me. I have collaborators both here on YouTube and over on Instagram. If you want to see the videos here on YouTube, you'll just click on that hashtag in the title or it is up on screen now so you can search for it. And then over on Instagram, you can either search for that same hashtag or I do have a link to it in that description box below. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they made this month, and leave them some love. Now, if you're inspired to create with a new sheet load of cards, on each of the monthly printables, I do have some hashtags at the top that I would love for you to use if you make a video or do an Instagram or TikTok post. As I start the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I am using. If you do want more detailed information on the main products, you can always check out yesterday's video. But if I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started today by showing you how to cut the pattern papers. Now the awesome thing is this one does not have any scraps left. I chose six different patterns from the Not Too Shabby Sunflower Bees paper pad and I paired them up in three sets of two patterns that I wanted to go together. The first cut I'm going to make is straight down the middle at three inches and then I stacked those two pieces on top of each other and rotated them and cut four inches off the top. Now if your paper trimmer or your cutter won't handle two sheets at once, you can definitely always just cut one layer at a time. If you are going to cut double layers like I did, you will want to make sure that you hold it nice and tight in place when you run the blade down them. You just don't want any slipping and crooked cuts. Now another thing to keep in mind is if your pattern paper does have a direction like something has to be the top because text needs to read a certain way, make sure to keep that in mind before you make that first cut. Next, I brought in four pieces of white cardstock for CS1B, and these are going to end up being the card bases. What I'm going to do with each of the cardstocks is cut them into strips that are three and a quarter inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. Now you will see after I cut three pieces from each piece of cardstock, I do have some left over at the end. This might be a great piece to use for your sentiments later on, or just save it when you might need a white scrap. I keep cutting those strips until all four cardstocks are cut down, and that leaves me with 12 pieces. Now we will come back to these later to turn them into card bases. 
for now, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the CS1A pieces. For this, you need one piece of letter size cardstock and a scrap. Now this would also be a great piece to use up some of your white scraps on. For my ovals, I ended up using the bonus cut file for channel members this month. I have one that is a solid, just flat oval and one with the scalloped edges. Now if you are a channel member, make sure to keep watching so you can find out how to download your SVG files this month. Finally, for the cutting, I did have the three pieces of matting cardstock, but you'll see that I did just use one for those scalloped ovals. The other two I'm going to cut until I yield 12 pieces that are three inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. To do this, I started by cutting two and a quarter inch strips off the long edge of my cardstock, and then those got rotated and cut down to three inches wide. I just kept cutting until I had 12. And one thing I do want to mention now that if you do have oval dies that you want to use, they do not have to be exactly the same size as what the sketch you know, dictates, just use what you have that looks good and fits with your focal points. I brought back in those 12 pieces of white cardstock for the card bases, and you could definitely fold this in half if you wanted to, but I am gonna go ahead and use my score buddy, score each of these pieces at four and a quarter, and then fold them in half and just reinforce that fold with the bone folder. While I continue scoring and folding the card bases, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Now, if you've been around my channel long, you know that I used to do these all the time. I kind of got out of the habit, and since I've kind of missed it, and a couple of you have asked me recently what happened to them, I thought I would bring these back. These are just fun questions I like to pose to my viewers so we can just share with each other and get to know each other a little better. Sometimes they're crafty, sometimes they're not, but I am always interested in hearing your answer. For today's question, I would like to know, which do you do more often? Just fold your cards by hand only or score and fold? I will answer that question in just a second, but I want to let you know that I would love for you to leave your answer in the comment section below, and please make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, to your comment so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. Until I got my score buddy, which was maybe in the past six months to a year, most of my card bases were just folded by hand, and I might have used a bone folder to reinforce that crease. But since I've gotten this little one that is so handy to get out, I have been scoring and folding more often. Previously, I just had a larger board to score on, and it was kind of a hassle to get out. I can't wait to read your answers. For my ovals, since I won't be stamping an image or sentiment onto them, I wanted to give them some texture to break up all of that white. So I brought in this honeycomb embossing folder from Tailored Expressions and I added this cute little design to it. Now you can always use the embossed or the debossed portion. I just ran these through two at a time in the embossing folder until I had 12 embossed ovals. My next step was to match up each of the pattern papers for the cards. So I laid out all of the patterns that I wanted together on my desktop, and then I just mixed and matched these pieces. The background piece just had to be different than the smaller piece on top of it. Once I had all of those matched up, I brought in my little blue rectangles, and I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but this is Blue Raspberry from Gina K Designs. I added adhesive to the back of the small strip, and then I placed this onto the blue mat, and you'll see here that it does fill the width left to right, and there's just a little bit of blue peeking out at the top and bottom. I continued adding these to the small mats until all 12 sets were ready to go. 
My next step is going to be to add the two pattern paper pieces together. And for this, you can always bring in the printable and set your pieces side by side so you know exactly where your center piece can go. But don't forget, you can always move that up or down if you like as well. For myself, I'm just going to go ahead and eyeball it here. After I add adhesive to the back of the matted piece, I placed it probably about a half an inch down from the top of the larger piece of pattern paper. Once again, I just keep adhering until all of these are ready to go. Now it's time to get the pattern papers added to the front of the card base. This just gets adhesive on the back and then centered on the front of the card and you will notice it has a small white border all the way around. While I work on putting the rest of those together, I did have a special announcement and thank you. Up on screen now is a list of the channel members who celebrated one year of channel membership during the month of August. I would like to say an extra special thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support over the past year. Like I mentioned before, you can have the embossed or the debossed part of the oval facing up. For me, since there is more surface area for the adhesive to grab onto, I will have the embossed part facing up, so I added it to the more flat side. I centered the white oval inside of the blue scalloped mat, and then I continued adding adhesive until I had 12 ovals. Now while I'm working on this, I want to let my channel members know how they can download their channel member bonus for the month. I usually like to provide a printable or a cut file from time to time, and this month I thought maybe you don't have the exact size dies you need, or a flat and a scalloped oval that will mat together. So I have created cut files or SVG files to size for this month's sheet load of cards. You are gonna find the link after 12 p.m. Central Time today on the membership tab on my channel. And you'll just click on that and you can download the SVG. Now, if you are wanting to get started a little bit sooner than noon, if you check out the same tab and look for the blog update post, I do already have the link up on the channel member blog. If you do have any questions about this free download for channel members, you can always reach out to me at either our special channel member email address or at the one listed in the description box below. Happy crafting and thanks for your support. Originally, I was thinking about putting my sentiment on a little strip of cardstock on the front, but I realized at this point I wanted to add it to the inside. Now, normally I would not wait until all of that had been decorated, but since I did have my Misty, I crossed my fingers and gave it a try. And this is just one of those things that the Misty is wonderful to have. I set my stamp up on the inside and it reads buzzing by to say hi. I just set it up once, inked it up with that blue raspberry ink, and then stamped it on the inside of the card. And now since it was ready to go, I did the rest of those 12 cards. Now it's time to add the ovals to the card bases. And one thing you do want to make sure you do is keep the dimensions within that six and a quarter inches so it will fit in your envelopes. Now to do this, you could bring in the sheet load of cards and hold the pieces up to that. You could also use something like a Misty. It has that ruler on the left. Or you could get out one of the envelopes you're gonna use, place the pieces on top, and just make sure the oval doesn't extend past that. 
For me, I did decide to go ahead and just use the sheet load below it since my ovals were the same size as the printable. For the first one, I held the oval up, made a mark on the back with my fingernail where the adhesive needed to stay below, and then once I had adhesive on the back, using again the printout, I placed my oval on top of it. Now if you turn it over and notice that you have any adhesive showing with the ATG, it's really easy to just wipe that off. For the remaining ones, I didn't mark them with my fingernail since I had an idea of how high up the adhesive could go, but I did keep using the printable to know where I could place my oval. Once all of the ovals were adhered, it was time to get those decorated. And for me, I am using some ephemera that came from the same kit as the pattern papers I chose. This is a great way to add a colored image to cards without necessarily having to do any coloring. I spent some time pairing up each of the cards with some ephemera, either a piece or more than one. And here's a look at the ones I matched up. Now off screen, I used some foam tape and liquid adhesive to adhere down all of the ephemera. Here you'll see some pieces went down flat and some got popped up. I decided at this point that I did want to finish these off with a little bit of sparkle. So I brought in some honey colored gems from my stash and I added them to the front of each of the cards. And here are some close up looks at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the September 2022 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go see what my collaborators have created by clicking on the hashtag in the title and the links in the description box. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.